Nala the lioness has managed to overcome the effects of her anaesthetic from yesterday's tests, and it seems all the attention has drawn a crowd from the enclosure next door. The mystery illness is still worrying Glenn and Claire, so after a phone call from vet Johan saying the blood tests have arrived, Claire makes her way to his practice. The worst case is that, like Johan feared yesterday, that it might be a chronic kidney problem. And then we have to look at um, how bad it is and get his opinion then in terms of treatment, what she's going to need. And then we'll obviously look at um, w whether we think it's worth treating her again or whether the more humane thing is to put her down. I mean, we obviously will look at what we think is best for her. Uh, we got the results of the blood test now, and it's not, it's not looking too good. We know we can treat it a little for some time, but on the long term, the prognosis is not the best. It's what we suspected, a chronic uh, kidney failure. And um, it can be treated symptomatically, but, but we cannot stop the, uh, the, the process. Right. So from here, what's the next kind of move? Okay, what we'll definitely have to do is, I think we keep her where we've got her now. The mm. small enclosure with a lot of shade mm. and with much better shelter against rain and whatever. Mm. And then um, we have to treat her there, see how it goes. But she's not fit to put with other lines at this stage. Okay. We'll have to keep her separate. Thanks, Jan. OK. Claire meets up with Glenn to give him the news. Hi, Hi Glenn. Claire. Glenn, I've just seen Johanna de Munzi now. Yeah. Um, the results of the blood test came back. How does it look like? It is a chronic kidney problem, what he My thought goodness. was was right, yeah. basically. And we'll give it three days see. to see how this treatment has affected her and if there's improvement in her condition. Yeah. And then he'll look again, but she might require further treatment. With Nala still under doctor's orders, Claire and Glenn keep a quiet watch on Sharda to see whether or not she'll venture into the larger enclosure with Junker. Suddenly, she makes her move leaving Glenn just seconds to close the petition gate to stop her retreating back into her hospital camp. I managed to um, camouflage myself with the bushes. I think that worked. But basically, I closed the gate so she can't go back into the hospital camp anymore. And at this stage, I, I see she's very um, interested in the smells of Junga. She's just busy exploring the top section of uh, Junga's main camp. It could be a very long day. So, it hasn't actually gone to plan, has it? <laughs> well, it kind of has and it hasn't. Right. Um, basically, we can see Junka, but Sharda is, is in his enclosure, so she's, she's in Something. here with him, but she's hiding... It's over behind you, actually, behind the boma. Not, what usually happens when we've done it before at the sanctuary where we've introduced lions together, because with them being pride animals, they're social cats, it's ideal for them to be together. Mm. What usually has happened is they've kind of fought and then that's their way of kind of sussing each other right. out yeah. and then things settle down and, yeah. and they stay together. But with Junker and Sharda, there hasn't even been that interaction. Do you think that is because they've spent so much time, even though there's been a kind of bath between them, they've been able to see each other, they've smelt each other, they kind of, Still they have think. known each other. That's definitely a, a, a reason. Mm. Um, uh, but it's nothing to worry about. Um, right. At least then, you know, they're not fighting and they're not harming each other. Mm. Um, so we'll just keep an eye on them. Th there's bound to be some interaction at some stage. Yeah. yeah. Before Sharda's... Um, Comes into season. Yeah. Um, our vets will definitely give um, Junka a vasectomy, which means you'll still be capable of mating, but just no cubs born um, in these conditions, yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of like a retirement home. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> With Junka and Sharda still undecided about each other, I hardly dare ask how Nala was responding to her treatment, especially after the last set of blood tests. But I was in for a fantastic surprise. I cannot believe how perky she is. It was like a miracle, as there was Nala, bright enough and strong enough to be given the food she so desperately needs. Glenn had turned off the electric fence so even I could lend a hand. Hello. She's really got a cob on. Much better. <laughs> go, go. She, she's going to see it. There we go. Good there we go. There we go. Smell now as well. There we go. Mm, there. Yum, yum. You know what, Amanda? I was so negative last time when um, I saw her. I thought she was never going to pull through. But I had that positive side of me where I knew that lions are so resilient. Um, yeah. 
She just looks brighter, her whole face, mm. her eyes. Exactly. She's not there where I want her, but um, I think with the love that Claire, myself, we are, are giving her on this side, she's yeah. going to do really, really well. well. Look at her, though. She mm. just looks so much she better. She loves you. Mm. But you can still see, um, she still urinates quite a bit. Yeah. But she's doing but well. But she's an old lady. I mean, when you get to a certain 15, age. 15, 16 years old, that's not a joke. I know. She earned that, you know. Yeah. But, um, she's allowed to just sit there and have a wig if she wants. Just so sorry that she had to be in that cage for most oh, of her life. I know. Uh, I but know. now we're going to try to give her the best. You but know. it looks like she's finally kind of aware of her surroundings mm. and appreciating mm. yeah. where she is. So, what realistically do you think the future holds for Nala? I think, I mean, we, we have to be optimistic now. I mean, seeing her here now, you can see how much brighter she is. Yeah. But we do know that it is a, a chronic kidney problem that she's got, and that's probably, unfortunately, that is long term. She won't need treating again maybe for another kind of few months. Right. Um, but where it will change is if she starts to need treatment kind of every week, something like that. Mm. And then we have to then look at, you know, her quality of life and that kind of thing but hopefully she's going to carry on responding really well yeah. and she's going to have a bit of time with us here that's what we really hope i just want her to mm. have you know even a few months exactly. to a year yeah. of just freedom and just a taste of what her life should have been should have like been, then yeah. i think then we feel like we've done our job absolutely with things looking up for nala i've got high hopes for junker and shada who by now must surely be getting reacquainted tomorrow. It's almost three months since our three lions were rescued from their disgusting circus trailer in France. It's been a tough time for all three, but after a period of settling in, and in Junker's case a little vasectomy, they'll be able to live out their days in this amazing scenery. Already Sharda has settled in by Junker's side when he can be bothered, that is. But Nala will take a little longer. She's responding well to treatment and remains in the hospital camp with other born free lionesses nearby for company until she's well enough to join her own pals. Although she'll never be cured, the care team hopes she'll get to enjoy the next few years, now that she has the chance to live really wild at heart. So that's the story of how Junker, Nala and Sharda three circus lions from France ended up here in Africa. They may not have been born free, but they are now, in a sense, living free, hopefully for many years to come. If you'd like to rescue, adopt and help care for these and other captive or wild lions, contact Born Free online at bornfree.org.uk or call 0870 777 4321. That's 0870 777 4321. Calls are charged at your standard network rate. <laughs>